Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays for your weekly refresher on what's been going on in our Minecraft stream. So in the last stream we, um, well there's a few things have changed uh, since, since the previous one. Um, there's been some building work going on between episodes which is a little bit um, cheeky but also probably the only way that stuff would ever get done. So as you have a look around down here you might notice a few differences. The most obvious one is probably this sort of temple of map down here. So there's the uh, the map of the of the world in the middle of the uh, temple down there. And then some lovely columns around it and other sort of pathways and hedges and things. Um, and Mike has been going around prettifying the area and putting down flowers and hedges and things. And he was very pleased to have got to have picked up an achievement for pretty. Um, which um, he's very... Uh, I think it's the first time anyone's ever called him pretty. So he's very excited about it. We've also got a new storage area starting up down here. And this is all automated with uh, cunning things like um, draw controllers and other such stuff which means I can come down here and I can basically empty all the junk out of my inventory by um, where is the I can't even find it. oh here it is by double right clicking on there and it will automatically sort it into all of these convenient drawers and mini drawers and just put put everything where it belongs I think Tristan has been also been working quite hard on trying to organize things in sensible ways so we've got all the different types of wood over here and sort of tree based nonsense this is sort of Looks like mi fairly miscellaneous stuff, but the sort of miscellaneous stuff that you have quite a lot of, including 98 signs for some reason. I don't know why people have made quite that many signs. And then types of rock and cobblestone and so forth over here in all of these drawers. And there's some compacting drawers over here as well. And I think the idea of these is it allows you to quickly come along and grab, um, yeah, compressed netherrack or compressed stone or double compressed, double whatever. Whatever it is you need in, 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 sort, of, in, in sort of compressed quantities as well. So we've got all these storage areas and that allows us to quickly unload all of the random nonsense we're carrying around with us, which is very, very useful. A bit of further progress has been made on the Wizard's Tower, although not an enormous amount. Um, we've got, um, we've now got the, the, the whole glass thing around here is now finished and lovely and pretty and see-through as you can see. It's starting to form a sort of almost a, almost a sort of a large wagon wheel type um, effect up there in the, in, in the sky, which again looks quite pretty but isn't isn't quite the look we're going for however it's sort of been put on pause a bit because it requires an absolutely phenomenal quantity of stuff so it's just it it's a bit expensive and a bit time consuming however i have been quite busy over in the in the wizard's tower i've been working on um, mostly dark magic in the last run well actually no mostly it was exploration but i'll talk about that in a, in a little while but down here in the um in in the sort of the dark magic dungeon area We've got loads and loads of blood in here, but I have actually used a bit of this up. If we have a look at the quest lines, you can see here there's, there's a few more have been, have been explored. So I, I, I completed the sacrificial knife, which allows me to um, basically cut my cut myself and cause cause myself pain in order to generate a certain type of magic force, which is um, okay to an extent, but in the end, you, but you eventually sort of start to run out of health and it gets a little bit awkward. I um, I did actually die to that once because I wasn't paying proper attention. I thought the sacrificial knife, uh, which I probably put in my away my backpack out no I'm in here there it is this one I was over here using it on the um on on the thing over here to, to fill it up a little bit which you can no not like that like that like that okay there we go so you, you right click above the altar and you can see my health is going down but the altar is filling up um which is all very well, but if you don't know, I thought the the uh, the bar on the right was the amount of magic that I'd sort of stored up in this knife from. I, I'm not sure what I thought I'd done with it, but it was stored in it. So I was right clicking over here, attempting to transfer it across, but actually I was just b burning through my health, and eventually I died from that. So I felt very silly from that. But it did allow me to then go through and make where are they? These things, the larger sigil, la, larger lava sigil and water sigil, and these are things you can essentially you you put them down in a in a in a, in a place, and they will take a certain amount a chunk out of your health, but they will also create a um, a block of whatever it is they're supposed to do. So if we just dig a quick hole here, use the lava sig uh, water sigil. If I right click, as you can see, it hurt, but now there's a, pl a block of water there. Now, water is not, is, isn't, it's not so valuable because there's quite a bit of water available out in the world and it is infinitely replenishing. However, you can also use it to generate lava, and that's a bit more useful because lava doesn't infinitely regenerate. And I believe in the future there's going to be other ways of um, producing the, the life force that's needed to produce these things rather than just taking it out of my own health. Perhaps I'll be able to come up with a way to just take it out of Mike's health or something like that. That'd be much easier. Um, and then I can then I can generate as much as much lava as we need, and that leads on quite neatly 
to a run across the base. This is the back door, isn't where I meant to go. This leads on to this lava storage area we've got in the uh, smeltery building. And it's over here because this is the main area that lava is currently used, and it's used for a number of things. Um, top of the list is the smeltery itself, which has um, a certain amount of lava in it. Uh, you can see here we've got two, two, almost two and a half buckets of lava in here, that, which will power it for a fair amount of time, to be fair. So that's a decent amount. But then there's a huge amount stored here. So we've got 48 buckets in that one, 63 almost in that one, 64 in that one. You see, all, each of these columns has stores quite a lot of lava. And what's happened down here is it's been piped through this hardened fluid duct, which is what you need for a uh, for transporting lava, otherwise it would burn, into this magma anvil here. And the magma anvil is something we've been wanting for ages because it allows you to come in and repair your tools. So I put that in there and it churns through some of the, some of the magma and repairs it churns through some of the magma, repairs it. And you can even repair swords with that, sentient swords with that as well. So all of those sentient swords we had that were getting gradually more and more damaged, we are now able to come along here and repair them and bring them back up to full, full, full strength and full spec. And that's really useful. It is very expensive in lava. As you'll see, I've even those just those tiny bits of repairing I did have got through about an entire bucket of lava. So it's it's expensive. So one of the things we did was we went off to the nether with our um, with, with carrying these tanks and we filled them all up from lava pools over there. And it's a fairly simple process. You put the you put the tank down on one side, you get your bucket out and you scoop up some you scoop up some lava, you put it in the t in the tank. You scoop up some lava, you put it in the tank, and so on. You can also do it with cells, which are a lot like buckets. Do I have any on me? I don't have any on me. They're a lot like buckets, except they stack, so it makes it a bit easier. You can have a stack of ten of them, fill them all up, and then dump them all into the into the tank in one go. Um, but because they're not a vanilla thing, it does something funny with your inventory where they get dropped and picked up again, which makes them a little bit more of a faff to use. But it is still, it's potentially more, potentially easier. Depend, it, it's sort of then, then a sort of a personal choice thing. So we did quite a lot of that in the over in the uh, in the Nether. Um, I died once due to sort of a poor understanding of how the um, the liquid, how the block physics in in uh, Minecraft work, and not because I um, did the obvious thing and put down a, a, a and, and cut through a hole and, and had lava fall on my head. I was able to I did that a couple of times. I was able to avoid them without dying. No, this was because I put one. I um, it turns out that when you're trying to empty your bucket or your cell into the tank, if you're crouching because you don't want to fall off the edge into the lava, because if you crouch and sneak, you don't fall off the edge of things like this. Um, but if you're not you can just fall straight in. So I was doing that, but it turns out if you're crouching and try and put the put try and put the lava into the into the tank, then it just goes everywhere and you burn to death and it's a bit embarrassing and then it takes you forever to get back to it. And then you discover that your um your grave has appeared in a completely different cave to the one you're in, and it takes you ages to go and um go and find it. And you need to call in some help from your um, teammates to come along and bring you some axes and things so you can actually mine your way through to find where the game has decided to hide all of your stuff. So that was a little bit annoying, but I did eventually um recover from that. There was something else I did down here. Something else in the dark magic quest lines. Oh yes, that was it. I made some dead trees. So one of the one of the other ones was find some was make some dead bushes and then some dead tree dead um, undead saplings. And once you've made your undead saplings, you can then go and plant them. And I considered planting them inside, but I decided that was a bit weird to have a tree inside. So out here, we've got a couple of these undead trees which grow undead logs and presumably undead leaves as well. And because because it's dark magic stuff, they they gradually drip blood as well. These are not these are not uh, plums falling from these trees. These this is more blood, which is all part of the general loveliness of um of of the dark magic system, which is all very very blood based. And I think that was that's everything I've done on the blood uh, on the dark magic side. We also did a little bit more explore. Oh. Somebody came in and and replaced the uh, the 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 sling, slime sling based um, climbing up the towery towery system with these elevators and these are great. You stand on them, you press jump, and you shoot up to the next level of whatever it is. Do it again, you shoot up all the way to the top level. Um, so that's a much, is, is to be fair a much easier way of getting up. So we've gone from having a spiral staircase that was an enormous pain to having a slime sling system that was mildly fiddly to having these elevators that are just absolutely trivial. So that's 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 a nice improvement. I approve of that. The other thing we did was we explored another new dimension. So this thing here, this is a twilight forest portal. So this takes you off into this sort of weird mystical fairy dimension with portals and uh, we're sorry, with forests and other stuff. And over here, here we are. This is the the twilight dimension, and we've got the again, we've got the same sort of portal on this side. So it's nice and easy. You just jump in it, and it takes you from one side, one way or the other. It's like those pools in the in the uh, in the last or possibly first, depending on how you look at it, Narnia book. And over here, there is stuff. So we found this, um, what's basically a gingerbread cottage over here, which was um, 
lovely. So we went over and ha had a little bit of an explore. Turns out these have um, spawners in, that's a fireplace. They Well, it had a spawner in that was generating skeletons. So we were, but we were able to kill those. We seem to have got significantly better at combat recently. And I don't know whether that's because the stuff we're finding in this dimension is significantly easier to deal with, or whether it's just that we've got better at better gear. Because we do now all have full iron armor, and this needs a little bit of repairing, but it's mostly okay. Um, and then there were these chests in here as well. We, we came in and we looted and uh, left behind the stuff we didn't care about. But there was a lot of bread in this place for some reason. Uh, so we did some exploring of that. Where else did we go? We also went... I think it was this way. Maybe, maybe we head north a little bit, see what we find. So one of the notable things about the, uh, the Twilight Forest is that there's different um, plants and different animals and different everything. So we've got some coffee seeds here. Let's, let's take those. Might as well see if we can grow some coffee. Um, we've got these wild boar over here. There were some deer that I saw on the way over. There's de lots of types of mushrooms. There are, the, the trees are different. What's this? It's a canopy tree. And it has fireflies growing on it. And there's also these um, jars hanging, for, hanging in places, sometimes on sticks, that have fireflies in them. And I think they're supposed to produce light, although I have to admit, I'm not sure. Who are you? Some sort of tweeting bird. Lovely. And a forest raven. And all all kind yeah, so the flora and fauna are a bit different in this dimension, as you'd expect, because we're in a different place. And there's also this um on the other side of the river, there is a spooky, spooky part of the Twilight Forest. And if you go in here, uh well it seems to be an oak wood, that's reasonably normal. We can cut our way in. But as you can see, it's getting very, very dark in here. And did I bring any torches? I did. Even if you I think even if you put torches down. They help a tiny bit, but only a very, very tiny bit. So I'm going to put a, a trail of them down just so I don't get too lost in these woods. I like to breadcrumb a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's very, very dark. And as you can see, I'm going gradually... Yeah, ooh, and I'm being followed by a kobold. Let's, let's get out of here. So fortunately, I put these torches down and I headed in a more or less straight line. So heading out shouldn't be too difficult. And it takes my eyes a little while to, re to sort of readjust to the brightness as you come back out again. But yeah, so that is a spooky, spooky area and the kobold is following me. But um, that's not too much of a worry because I do have my sentient sword. Let's go and deal with it. Famous last words. Okay, that was that was, that was was easier than expected. Uh, now I feel slightly guilty. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we've got... The, it's a very, very dark and spooky forest over there and kind of kind of scary i put it those torches i put in yes they're casting a little bit of light but it gets very very dark very very quickly so we we haven't really explored in there yet oh yes one of the other things we found um was this was this hedge maze which was um a not a novelty so was these, these wild boars yes wild boars so we found this hedge maze and we had a wander around inside it got a, it got a little bit lost apparently somebody why am I getting attacked by... What is that? Hos hostile wolf. Okay, let's... um, Stop it. Um, right, I don't know why... Th I don't know why that wolf was hostile. Apparently, normally, they're fairly friendly, but... Oh, well. Anyway, what was I saying? Yes, there was a hedge maze, and we sort of had a bit of an explore around in it. Uh, my, uh, Al cheated a bit by uh, slime slinging up onto the top of it, but discovered if you stand on the top of the maze, then it hurts. So that's sort of... <laughs> I, I, I guess that's a sort of, some sort of karmic um, thing going on there. But that wasn't, wasn't the most interesting thing we found in this place. If I keep going probably this way, we found another, another house, so we had a, a quick loot of that. Um, and then over here, oops, hit that tree. Over here, right, over here, things started to get progressively a little bit weirder. On one, for one thing, we we found these giant mushrooms, which were mildly interesting. Although apparently you need silk touch to actually harvest them. If you just punch the blocks out with well anything, um, they just disappear because, well, because just because. Um, but we also found this massive sort of fortress thing, and this is protected by some kind of spooky, spooky magic. So if you come in here and start mining chunks of it away, it automatically repairs itself. As you can see, all these all these blocks have been have reappeared after I, after I knock them out. Um, and so it makes it rather tricky to get inside. We did get inside a little bit, but only only a very little bit. And, and even then, we were kind of stuck and eventually had to, had to give up on exploring it. We did, however, find um, a logbook from some other traveller that says basically you need to get in order to defeat this place. You need to go and find, um, there's a giant green snake somewhere and you need to harvest its scales and make something or other out of them. I forget exactly what it was. Um, oh, it was this, this, this book here, in fact. 
Um, yes, blah, 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 stronghold. Oh no, this is a diff diff different um, explorer's notebook. I'll have to have a look at that one some other time on, on stream when I'm, when everyone else is around, so it's not sort of, not spoilery. <laughs> so yes, it's a giant sort of creepy looking fortress. So at some point we're going to try and explore this and that'll be exciting and interesting and different. We also found this enormous tree and it turns out these enormous trees are climbable. You can get on these uh, vines and shoot up them like this. Whee! And then you get to the top and you go, why did I come up here? Um, but the views, are, the views are spectacular. So we, we came up here, we had a bit of a look around. Um, and had a good look at the fortress from up here as well. And we were all able to slime sling over onto the top of the fortress from here. Oop. Which again, didn't, but did, that didn't actually do us any good because there weren't really any ways to get inside. So we, we eventually had to give up on this place, which is a bit of a shame because it does seem interesting. Um, and I, I look forward to uh, exploring it a little bit more thoroughly in the future. So after exploring the um, exploring the uh, what do you call it the uh, the twilight dimension, we eventually decided it, um, there wasn't really much more to do here. We'd harvested some of the more sort of some of the random novel interesting things from the place, and so we wanted to sort of we thought we'd <clears throat> head back uh, head back to the real world and carry on with the uh, the quests and things over there. I did somehow manage to lose my shulker box while I was over here, and a shulker box is a sort of a um, it's a portable chest, basically. It's a chest you can put down, you can put a load of stuff in it, and then it'll allows you to um, then just pick it all up as one single thing. And that makes it much easier to carry enormous quantities of stuff around with you, which is great if you're going, um, going mining or going exploring another dimension where you want to just harvest enormous quantities of stuff. And you don't want to be heading back to the real world all that often in order to unload it. That pretty much covers what I did in the, in the stream. I did also make this um, exalted crafter, which is basically a portable um, a portable crafting bench, which I think is going to be potentially quite useful. But we'll see how see how we how handy it comes in, and uh, and whether whether other people are then ask me all ask me to build one for them. <clears throat> Thinking of other people now, um, Mike built us a windmill over on top of one of the buildings somewhere. Although I can't see it now, maybe it was dismantled and reused somewhere else. I thought I think it was on that stick that's sticking up off the top of the car park down there. Either that or it's out outside render distance for it. But um, his main my main thrust recently has been to be been enormous quantities of construction with the uh, with the towers and some of the and uh, some of the prettification down there. Tristan has been resource gathering. Well, actually, everyone's been resource gathering. There's been lo lots and lots of resource gathering has been required. But also, his main thrust was the um, the this this uh, sort sorting out sorting and storage area that I was talking about earlier. And hopefully, at some point, at some point, this will get bigger and bigger and have more and more different things stored in it. And we'll be able to just dump more and more random stuff from our inventories into it and have it just get sorted into sensible places. And eventually, maybe we'll have some sort of network system that links it all up and allows us to have do uh, requests through it as well. But I think that's going to be some way off. Pete would like it to be known that he uh, killed a troll, which seems very cruel of him. Although, as the Dark Wizard, I'm not sure I can uh, criticise too much. And he put the... Um, because he's somewhat psychotic, he put the tro troll's skull on display in the office down here. So, uh, this is... Stop bouncing. This is Mike's office building, and there's now a troll skull on display on one of the desks, and um, this random clown head on another one, as well as the cat over there that we mentioned before. And upstairs, we've been sort of gathering some of the, some of the machines in here. Things, things are sort of... This is meant to be sort of personal crafting. So you come over here when you have a quick thing that you need to put together yourself. So we've got the blacksmith's workshop, engineer's workshop, advanced crafting table, normal crafting station, which has a box on top of it for some reason. And various storage over here. Ones, but nothing in them by the looks of it. Okay, fair enough. He'd also been busy in the with the um the planting and growing of things. Particularly over here in this new area, which is for mystical agriculture. And I've touched on this before, in that we've got um these plants grow and then you can harvest them. You get some you get a special type of essence from them and you can then turn that into Things. So over here we appear to have Prudentium Inferior Man of Steel Basing. I don't. I'm not sure which of these have been. Well, actually, I can. I can find out. We've come over here. We see wood, sea, stone, nature, nature apparently. Red, redstone. Yes, I think. And Inferium. So all of these are being used to grow all of the various different types of essences. And I think I've got some of that. Yeah, let's put let's put that there as well. 
get rid of that. So he's been growing all of this and also just generally managing the animals, making sure they don't run out of hay, important stuff like that. All the cows are and things are asleep because it's night time at the moment, so that's fair enough. I don't think a great deal of cooking has been going on in here. Um, I'll just come through and steal some. Is there anything here I haven't eaten? Only the things that are basically poisonous and therefore I've been sort of avoiding. Let's have some soup and some tomato and herb chicken. That sounds, those sound delicious. All that running around in the twilight forest dimension has um, got through most of my uh, food and hunger supplies. So there we go. That's boosted, boosted me back up to some, somewhere a little bit healthier. I should probably come through and plunder these um, bushes actually and just claim all the berries from them. And Al has been doing similar sort of things as well. He's been um, doing, doing some doing some mining, making some gear. He of course came on on the uh, on the uh, trip with us to the um, to the forest and to the Nether as well. And, and and various various things happened there. Some some good, some bad. Um, and oh yes, and uh, Mike made us all shields as well. So we've now all got a shield in our own in our own colour with sort of various decorations on it. So that's very nice. Um, and yeah, that's been about it. So I. Yes, I, I have run out of things to talk about, so thank you for watching. I hope you'll come and come along and join the stream on Monday and uh, see us actually actually doing these things in real time. I've got a system set up where you can see the other players' is, um, screens as well as mine while I'm while I'm streaming, um, and you can also so you can follow along from there and um, and, and and see how see how everyone's getting on. There's also going to be the Factorio stream on Wednesday and the videos from both of those coming out on uh, Saturdays and Sundays. I'm doing reasonably well at extra videos on Tuesdays at the moment, so there's a few of those to check out and I think there should be another one coming out next week. Um, and then, uh, is that everything? I think that's pretty much everything I'm doing on the channel. So I hope you're... Oh, oh and the GTA videos on Thursday, mustn't forget those. So I hope you're enjoying everything I'm putting out and uh, <laughs> coming along and watching lots of it. If you are watching these videos and you're not watching the streams, uh, could you let me know why? Because I obviously want to get the want to sort of improve my content and get it make it make it more interesting for the people who are watching. So if there's if there's a reason you're watch, you you enjoy the videos but not so much the streams, then uh, yeah, please let me know why that is and I'll see if I can um, see if I can make things better. So I look forward to seeing you in the uh, everything that's to come. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.